Good evening and welcome to tonight's Bible study. We are coming to the last study with King Saul. Uh, and the last chapter of Samuel, 1 Samuel. And, and we begin the first chapter of 2 Samuel. And uh, so... 1 Samuel 31 opens and said that the uh, Philistines came hard against the uh, Israelites and the Israelites ran and Saul's sons were killed and Saul was wounded by archers and Saul asked his armor bearer, I'm getting a reflection here on my eyes, <laughs> Saul asked his armor bearer, to uh, kill him because he didn't want the uncircumcised Philistines to make sport of him, drag him around and do all kinds of wicked things to him. But his armor bearer would not do that. And Saul fell on his sword. And, you know, if you were to stab yourself in the stomach... It is, and it's what the Japanese people used to call Harry Carry. Uh, it's a slow and very painful way to die. And chapter 31 doesn't tell any more about Saul, but as far as him being alive, but it said that the uh, Philistines found him in the morning and his sons, and they chopped off his head, and they hung his body on the wall in the Philistine city. And uh, there was one city in Israel that had heard about it, and they marched all night long to that city, took uh, Saul and his sons off the wall, took him back to Israel, and burned their bodies and buried their bones. And uh, they fasted for seven days. It was a uh, very touching tribute that they had done for Saul. And David, uh, he heard of it through an Amalekite that said that he had gone by the battlefield and saw... Saul, and Saul was leaning on his spear, he said, and he was not dead, and was asking uh, this young Amalekite to kill him, and he did, and he took his bracelet and crown off of him and he brought them to David and he must have thought he was going to get a reward and so David uh, kind of processed the uh, the word he processed it he grieved and then he talked to the young man again and and asked him more about uh, who he was. And then he asked him, how is it that you being a, an Amalekite boy thought to stretch out his hand to kill the Lord's anointed? And he said, by your own mouth, you convict yourself. And David had him put to death. Of course, it's a crazy uh, thing that Saul was supposed to have killed all the Amalekites. And David, he had just killed all but 400 Amalekites that got away in their camels. On their camels, I should say. They weren't riding in a camel, but they were riding on a camel. And uh, 
they uh, uh, they were supposed to have all been killed by Saul. And so an Amalekite kills Saul, one that should have been killed by Saul. And Saul did not follow what the Lord had asked him to do, and that's why he paid the price with his life. And his final breath was taken as the Amalekite took it from him. Uh, I hadn't pondered that fact in the reading before, but that's the uh, reality. So David and his men were grieved, and that's how Second uh, Samuel chapter one ends. Now R Romans chapter fourteen begins and really is speaking about the liberties that we have in Christ. It says one man eats meat and another man doesn't eat meat. Oh, and one man eats uh, by faith in the Lord and the other man doesn't eat by faith in the Lord. Uh, and it said if the weaker brother chooses not to eat the meat, don't let the one who has the liberty to eat the meat berate the person who believes that they don't have the liberty to eat the meat. You know, the, the Jewish dietary law was uh, strong. It was a strong conviction to the Jews, and some couldn't let go of those food uh, restrictions. And Paul understood that and said, you know, if one man believes he has liberty to eat the meats that weren't allowed to be eaten before, then if he does that by faith, believing that God gives him that liberty, then he can go ahead and do it. But uh, don't do it in front of somebody or cause somebody to stumble who does not believe in their heart that they have that liberty. And, uh, and so he said it would be better that you don't eat meat if you're causing a brother to stumble. And so we need to be sensitive uh, that our liberty that we have does not cause a weaker brother to stumble. And uh, I could say that about many things. Uh, yes, you could drink a beer and it would not be sin or you could have a glass of wine it would not be sin but if you cause a brother to uh, go on a drunken uh, binge because he believes that you uh, give him liberty to do that by your drinking one beer and it could be that he's weak and he can't restrain himself. There's no restraint in young people especially. Uh, it'd be better not to do that. And that's why the pastor's wife in California said, if you were going to be in a youth pastor or youth leader, they didn't want any alcohol in your household because you having alcohol in your household is like giving a green light to the youth that it's okay to drink. Well, I know when I was young and I uh, drank, there was no drinking a beer. I was drinking to get drunk. Uh, and uh, I drank two quarts of beer down in 20 minutes at the most, probably 15 minutes, half a gallon of beer down. I mean... I drank fast, <laughs> so I didn't get caught drinking and uh, stumbled around drunk all night long. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, i not proud of that, but I'm just saying that youth don't have restraint. And uh, so don't allow your liberty to be a, a reason to cause somebody else to fall.
and uh, that's important. It's an important uh, direction that we should take in our lives. That we that we live a life that lifts up other people, a life that is exemplary. Uh, said uh, that there shouldn't be any thing that would be questionable by an unbeliever. I don't know how to describe that, but say uh, there was uh, a young man and young woman unmarried, they shouldn't be living in the same home by themselves together. Shouldn't be, it shouldn't happen. And I have uh, blood that are doing that. And, you know, it's just not what the Lord would have us to do because it causes people to talk and causes the direction of the topic to go off of uh, giving glory to the Lord. It, it diminishes our ability to have a good witness. That's what it does. And so uh, I am uh, all about that these days. I want my witness to be good. I'm sad that my witness in my younger days was was not good. That I was an embarrassment to my sisters and that I brought dishonor on families' homes. And uh and it grieves me uh some uh lives that I trampled upon. So uh, I don't want to see anyone have that happen to them. And uh, so that's Romans chapter 14. Whatever we do, do to the honor and glory of God. All right. We'll see you tomorrow for Romans 15. And... There's 16 chapters in Romans, so we only have two more chapters in Romans. And, uh, hmm, it's a uh, powerful book. I urge you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's powerful. <laughs> just maul that over. If you take anything out of Romans, just know that's what the Lord wants for you. Praise God. You have a blessed night, and I'll be blessed to be talking to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.